Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you where all 45 Wii Pincers are in Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. These are these little crabs that you find throughout the game that are part of a side quest that grant a number of rewards, which we'll cover later in the video. They're also used to empower certain sigils, so you definitely wanna go out of your way and collect all 45 of them. And don't worry if you don't collect them on your first time through, after you beat the final bit of story, you will be given a chapter select where you can go back and re-explore. It even tells you how many you've collected, though it doesn't tell you from which sections, so that's where you're going to need a video like this. Anyway, we got a lot of these little buggers to find, so let's get started. Our first one is really simple. At the start of chapter one, you're just going to jump up on some small ledges to the right, and you'll find him just sitting there immediately. I jumped up here, and I don't know how this wasn't the first one that I found, but this will get you started on the right note, and it's the only one in chapter one. Now, chapter two, on the other hand, has seven different crabs, but they're all really easy to find. After being shown the hollowed ground by the caring man, you'll find one standing on a stone to the left. He's just waiting there for you in case you missed the first one. He's like, hey, guess what? Collectible, notice me, please. So grab that one and let's move on. After the previous crab, run through that cave until you exit on the other side and immediately turn left. You'll find some wooden platforms, and if you look on one of them, you will find a crab just enjoying his life. After that, you're going to want to free the first set of villagers and then continue onward. As soon as you go into this next little under section here, if you look on your right, you'll see a fence on the side of the cliff, but there's also a little parting in it. If you walk up to this parting, you will see one of your crabs just looking off into the distance. Now, fortunately for this next big section of the map, there's only two crabs and they're actually pretty close to each other, both of them near the burning village. As you approach the burning village, you're going to find one on a little cliffside near some breakables. It's easiest to find this if you go down the center of the map near the giant mountain in the middle, turn across this little bridge and then make another left. And again, you'll find it amongst all of these breakables. Once you're actually in the burning village, whether or not you're doing this after you've cleared the level, you'll find one just hanging near some breakables on a little tiny dirt mound. It's not far from one of the windmills that's right next to the omen stone on the other side, so you shouldn't have any problem finding these too. Now go ahead and finish this open section and get sent to the fortress and your final two crabs are going to be here. Right across from Sierra and the hollowed ground, you'll find it again amongst boxes and pots and all that stuff, just hanging out and enjoying life. Once you go past Sierra and the hollowed ground, right before the drop down for the chapter two boss, you're gonna find the crab hanging out in some grass to the left on some wooden planks. With that, you already got eight crabs down. Chapter three also has three very easy to find crabs. After the cutscene entering the large cave with Furricane just destroying everything, you're gonna wanna hug the left wall until you hit the edge of a wooden platform. He's tucked behind a small wooden post. I just spam circle while I was looking for them and just picked them up as I ran past. Now you're going to want to get into the center platform with all the goblins. So after you lower the drawbridge, you can find it on that platform. Turn right after dropping down and you'll find him gazing off into the sunset on some wooden planks. And the final one for chapter three is actually near the phantom chest after you escape from the rampaging primeval god the first time. I can't believe I didn't find this one my first time through. I guess I was just too distracted by the sparklies of the chest nearby. So grab that one and you can go ahead and quit this chapter or continue playing in the game. Now, chapter four does actually have one crab in it, and it's after you board the first ship. You're going to, want to stay on the lower section and just run to the far end. He's hiding tucked away in the back. And again, I was just spamming circle here, so I just happened to pick him up and then had to go, uh, OK, well, this is what it looks like where he is. So he's pretty easy to find. Now for some of the more fun ones as we come to the ice stage of chapter five. Your first one's not gonna be until after you're ambushed by the initial set of undead. And after that, it's just on the right hand side of the room on like a spiky rock. He's just gonna be hanging out there waiting to be found. After collecting the previous crab, head into the cave with all of the ice. It has a lower and upper level, and you're going to want to jump up to that upper level. You'll find it just tucked against the wall on the right hand side before you even do the jump and go to the phantom chest. Make sure that you actually collect this. Now, you're going to want to keep progressing until you reach a ledge right before the bridge sequence that's going to drop you down into the boss fight. After breaking the ice with the chest in it, you'll actually find the crab on the next ledge down, hanging out on the right hand side. Now, you won't find another crab for quite some time, not until you get to the room with the first defense sequence with Historia. There's a pair of ruins that's overlooking the lower section of the defense point, and you're just going to want to climb those to the tippy top, and you'll find a crab sitting there waiting for you. 
Now, right after the first Historia defense sequence, you're going to want to run through the open door past the hollowed ground and just keep running straight. It's actually up on a rock right in front of you. Very inconspicuous, but you know what? You generally run along the edges and jump up on everything and you will find most crabs in case you haven't noticed. And then finally, right before the chapter boss, there's going to be an ice pillar and a couple of chests underneath when you get to the altar. Just break the ice and you will find the crab sitting down here somewhere. True story, this was the first crab that I found in the entire game, and it is number 18 on the list. You can imagine how upset I was. All right, now for the worst chapter of the batch, chapter six. There are nine crabs here, and most of them are in the giant open desert section. Fortunately, not all of them are. So for our next one, right as you enter the area, you just go to your right and there's going to be a handful of trees. One of them's knocked over and he's just hanging out by the stump of this tree. So grab him and we can get on with the rest of it. Now move on to the next section of the desert, the one with the wolves in the middle, but just keep running past the wolves until you get to an archway on the far end. You're going to be able to jump all the way to the top of this, and that is where you're going to find crab number two here. Yeah, that just shows you the kind of time you're going to have for the rest of this desert level. Fortunately, the third one in the desert's very quick to find. Once you're actually inside of the ruins, there's going to be some stones you can jump up on the left-hand side. There's some treasure chests all the way at the top, but you'll find him about halfway up taking a sand shower. So make sure that you free him from this probably not so pleasant experience. Now, unfortunately, the remaining six are all in the massive area, but that's what you have a guide for. You don't have to do what I did and run around for an hour and a half just hoping to find them and still not succeeding until several tries later. Now, after entering the massive area initially, it's going to be on the first broken stone building that you find in the desert. So you can see right here, that's where I entered from. This is where the crab is. Nice and easy. Now, looking towards the center of the map, I'm going to go left from this one. And it's actually just on a random rock as you approach the western keystone that has the rock golem. True story, this was the last one I found in the desert. It was so simple. I don't know how I missed it, but this one, you know, hiding in plain sight, it was the sneaky one. Now, on the flip side, if you go back towards that initial point and head to the right towards the eastern keystone, there's actually a crab just sitting on top of a random pillar. You're going to have to do a little bit of some platforming to get to it. I recommend just jumping off and then doing an air dodge to land right on it. But once you have that, then you're halfway done with this big area. The next one is over by the northern keystone. You can look right at it and then go left and just hug the far wall. This isn't how I found it, but it's how I'm telling you to find it. There is literally a crab tucked between some stones in a wall. I was so upset when I found this one because there's been none that have really been hidden like it. And truth be told, I found this one before the one in the log, so I was ill prepared. Now go towards the center of the map where you'll find a hallowed stone. You're going to want to go to the opposite side of the center of the map from where that hallowed stone is, and there's going to be a crab hidden underneath some rubble. You can see me, I'm looking at the hallowed stone from here. I look to my right and bam, there it is hiding under some rubble. And then finally, you're going to want to head over by the Griffin Keystone, and there's actually a series of caves underneath this, one of which actually features an Omen Stone. However, if you go to the upper level of the cliffs, you'll see that you can drop down over this room and find the final crab. So you're looking for a cliff that is hanging above the room with the Omen Stone in it. And that's all nine of them. I'm sure glad you don't have to do what I did to find all of these because it was not a fun time. Fortunately, chapter seven was a lot easier because it's a very linear path, even though there's a bit of stress to find these crabs. Now, fortunately, number 28, the first one of this area is just on a rock that's floating in magma. You'll actually probably find this one by accident because it's literally on the path of a phantom chest series of crystals. So that's how I found it. I was just running along, collecting the crystals, and then bam, I pressed circle and I had a crab. So this one's really easy. Now, the remaining two happen during chase sequences, so you may have to fail and start the chase sequence over once or twice just to make sure you get both of them. Now, during the first chase sequence, right after you drop down off the first ledge, immediately turn around. The little bugger's just gonna be looking right at you. The final one for this chapter is gonna be during the second chase sequence, pretty far in too. You'll eventually run past a chest in some cover on the left-hand side. Once you see that, 
keep looking off the left side of the pathway and you'll see some low ground with a crab on top of it. This was the last one I found, which sequentially makes sense, but I had to run this stage a lot to eventually notice that one. For chapter eight, once you enter Seed Hollow Castle, the very first major room will just have a bunch of Seed Hollow soldiers in it. And your first crab is gonna be on the far end of this room. Just go all the way to the back and to the left and you'll find them hiding under a chair. Now, when you leave that room, you're going to have to open a door. And as soon as you open that door and see a legion of Avia soldiers in the middle of the bridge, just look on the right hand side and he'll be sitting there waiting. Now, after you clear out the soldiers and enter the next building, you'll eventually come to a split path. Now, if you go to the left, it's just an obvious dead end. But at the end of that dead end on the left, there's a crab. So grab him. You won't have another crab for quite some time here. You're gonna have to wait until you actually do the Tayuatar fight, and there's gonna be an omen stone in one of the corners there for you to challenge. The crab is right behind that omen stone on the left. And the final one is going to be in a pretty obvious spot I found, in the fountain in the middle of the room where Roland opens up the staircase. So it's like right near the end of the level and should be pretty easy to spot. Then we go into chapter nine, where fortunately the crabs stand out pretty well, even though they're thrown in some pretty awful places. Now, right when you enter, there's gonna be some buildings that you can climb on the left-hand side, destroyed of course, but there. It'll actually be at the very top. You'll see a little drop down that has the crab on it, and you can see right here, there's the entrance, there's the crab, and bam, you're good to go. Now, your next one won't be till after you beat the Furricane again. You'll come to a path with a lower and upper level. Now, on the lower level, if you just hug the left wall, you'll eventually find a crab. You can see that I'm looking at the Phantom Chest as kind of a marker for this. And then I just look to my right and bam, there it is. So this is how I found it easily. Now, your next one won't be till after you defeat Mana Garmer. There's actually going to be some buildings on the right hand side to jump on, and he's going to be tucked all the way in the back. You can see me. This is me looking down back towards where I fought Mana Garmer, and then this is the crab. And so I grabbed him. Now, your next two are going to be during the purple lava section, both before and after the boss. Much like during the chase sequence in the previous volcano chapter, there is one during the chase sequence here. During the purple lava run, he's literally just going to be on a rock to the left. You can see I barely noticed him here as I was running past, grabbed him, took the L, but the collection counted. So I just finished things up after that. After that, you're going to want to beat the boss. And then as soon as you beat the boss, Look to your right and you'll find that you have a little friend just waiting to be collected. No, I didn't see that the first time through. I was just too excited to continue on. Finally, after collecting that crab, just continue upward until you're about 90 meters away from the top of the pillar objective. And you're gonna find a crab just chilling on one of these floating platforms here. This is the last one you need here and then we can get on to our last few. Now, the next two crabs are going to be found in the first part of the epilogue where you're forced to play as id. You're going to want to progress pretty far into the level till just before the second card of supplies. And you'll see a wooden pathway going to the right that at the end of it just leads to a single goblin. The crab will be hiding on the right side of this pathway just behind a pillar. You can see I just was spamming circle and found him as I circled this corner, as I rounded this corner. And that was how I figured out where he was. Now, literally right near the second cart itself, you'll actually find a phantom chest after you clear out all the enemies. Just a few steps away from that is another crab, and that's all you need for this section. And the final two crabs are in the part two of the epilogue where you return to the Pillar of Vioi. The first one, I am embarrassed I didn't see it the first time I played because as soon as you load in, look to the right, and he's right there. I don't know how I missed it. And then finally, number 45. Now, after the same path that I detailed for crab number 36, where you have the lower and upper levels, you'll come to where that stone was blocking your path the first time through. Now, on the right-hand side, you'll see a small stone brassiere, and right behind it is the final crab. Now, with all of these, you can turn in all of the individual quests in Folka, and you're going to get a, a ton of stuff. Among them, you're going to get a ton of upgrade materials, though by this point, a lot of them are probably pretty below your pay grade. One of the most important things you do get, however, is the Crab Vestment Return Sigil. This just gives you 20% HP and plus 10% to damage cuts, so a pretty valuable thing to have equipped. Now, also, by having all 45 crabs, you'll reach the maximum level on the Krabby Resonance Sigil, which will give you plus 1000 flat attack, which is also pretty good. 
For all 45 of them, you do get the golden pincer statue, but it seems to just be a completion item. I couldn't do anything with it, at least not immediately. So maybe when I'm releasing this video, there is one more thing to do with it. But the important thing is you have now found all 45 Wii pincers and can stop obsessing over it like me. With that, that's going to be a wrap for my Grand Blue Fantasy Relink Guide. Be sure to like and subscribe and be sure to tune in February 1st. I'll be tackling the PC version starting all over again. Listen, it's only a few days worth of progress. I'll skip all the cutscenes. We'll be back in business in no time at all. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, take care.